Hey Team Bio, welcome to your screencast on osmosis and diffusion. Um, now, today in class, we saw some examples of diffusion. Um, when we added food dye to different uh, temperature water solutions, and you saw that the rate of diffusion was dependent on the temperature. Um, and you saw over time that the dye particles uh, spread out. So I guess that brings us to what is diffusion? Well, it is the tendency for particles of any substance to spread out. And this is a property um, of all things that are at a temperature above absolute zero. They have um, some thermal energy that causes them to jiggle or move around. And the movement of individual molecules is random. This is important. But on net, they move down their concentration gradients. So even though every single particle is moving randomly, um, when you gather up, uh, when you sum up all of those random um, movements, it causes the particles to spread out. So on net, um, they, the particles, move down their concentration gradient. Until, and that's just a fancy way, concentration gradient is, um, this sentence is basically just saying, it's a fancy way of saying they spread out. Uh, they move down their concentration gradient until they reach dynamic equilibrium. Um, and that's when the concentration is equal. Um, relatively throughout the, and, and remember, it's, it's dynamic. So it doesn't mean that the particles stop moving once they reach this equilibrium. They're still moving, um, but now their random motion has caused them to distribute equally throughout the solution. Um, so when this happens across cell membranes, we call it passive transport. So I'm going to just write this all down. When... This happens across passive transport because it requires no energy input by the cell. And, um, yeah, so it's just going to happen due to uh, the laws of thermodynamics. So um, in order to move things across their membranes in this manner, when things are diffusing down their concentration gradients, it doesn't require cells to exert any energy. And now this brings me to osmosis because osmosis is just a very particular type of passive transport. It is specifically... Um, 
the passive diffusion or the um, passive passive transport special case diffusion of water across a semi permeable membrane. Okay, so this is a lot of writing. Let's get down to some examples. Um, okay, you learned in um, the screencast uh, last night that a semi-permeable membrane is a membrane that allows something to pass through while it excludes other things. So in the case that we're about to look at, the membrane is permeable to water, H2O, but um, impermeable to glucose. And we're going to be talking about how, uh, why this is the case, why cells are letting in water and preventing glucose from coming in in a screencast tomorrow night. But just for now, accept this as uh, the case, that water can cross the membrane, but glucose cannot. And uh, I guess it's also important to define that here we have a solution and a solution, the solution is co composed of the solvent and the solute. In this case, water is our solvent and glucose is our solute. Okay, so let's get right to our first example. So here we have an example of where a cell has a um, concentration of glucose and water inside of it that is different from the concentration um, that it is now immersed in. Um, these little uh, pink dots represent molecules of glucose. So you can see there's more glucose inside of the cell than outside of the cell in terms of the concentration. Um, so this, ooh, this is what we call a hypo Or, mm, when, when we're talking about the cell, we're always talking about the solution um, of the outside relative to what's going on inside of the cell. So that will make more sense in a second. Uh, okay, so when a cell is immersed in a solution in which the concentration of glucose and water is less outside than it is inside the cell, we call it a hypotonic solution. Hypotonic solution. Um, now, this is a little bit confusing, but because there is more, there are more free water molecules outside of the cell. Remember, glucose is a very hydrophilic molecule, so all of these little glucose molecules inside of the cell are going to be surrounded and, and binding through hydrogen bonding to water molecules inside the cell. So there's a lot of free water outside the cell relative to inside the cell. So on net, what's going to happen is water is going to diffuse into the cell. So we're going to have net movement of water in when a cell is immersed in a hypotonic solution. Um, in some cases, the swell, the swell, <laughs> the cell can swell to such an extent that it bursts. And this, uh, so here, we would have whoop, water now flowing out of the cell. And this situation is called cytolysis. Cyto meaning cytoplasm, lysis meaning to break or to split. So when a cell 
swells because it is immersed in a hypotonic solution and then bursts, it is called cytolysis. Um, now, this is only going to happen to certain type of cells, and we'll talk about what certain type of cells would experience cytolysis down below in a second. Um, okay, the next situation is when we have the opposite case. Now we have a hypertonic solution. And in this situation, now there's more water, free water, inside of the cell than there is outside of the cell. So on net, water is going to move out of the cell. And the cell is going to shrivel. So here's my best little shriveled up cell so sad. Um, and this state is called plasmolysis. Um, so when we put a cell in a hypertonic solution, water is going to move out and the cell will plasmalize. Um, okay, and the last case is the Goldilocks situation for, for animal cells which is called an isotonic solution. An isotonic solution is when the concentration of glucose and water inside of the cell is the same as the concentration of um, glucose and water outside of the cell. And so we still have water moving into the cell, but we also have water moving out of the cell at the exact same rate And so this cell is already in what we call dynamic equilibrium. So the cell, oops, I guess my cells were this. The cell is not going to change in size. Um, okay, I want to, so if a cell is immersed in a hypertonic solution, it's going to shrivel, it's going to lose water. If it's emerged in a hypotonic solution, it is going to gain mass because water is going to come rushing in, it might burst. Um, and if it is immersed in a isotonic solution, it's neither going to gain or lose mass. It's going to stay the same size um, because it's already in dynamic equilibrium. A cell will stop plasmolysizing as soon as it reaches dynamic equilibrium. So this isn't going to, this situation of water leaving the cell isn't going to stop until the concentration inside and outside the cell is the same. But I want you to note, to notice that the cell will stop shrinking as soon as it reaches dynamic equilibrium as well. So these should all be in dynamic equilibrium at the end of their journeys. Okay, but not all types of cells, um, or I should say different types of cells prefer to be in different tonicity uh, solutions. So animal cells, as we discussed above, they are very happy at isotonic solutions. Um, they want to be in solutions that have the same concentration of water and solute inside and outside of the cells. If they um, are immersed in a hypotonic solution, they will burst. And if they're immersed in a hypertonic solution, they will plasmalize, they'll shiver, shrivel. Um, so for example, if you have a severely dehydrated person, you can't just add um, water to their bloodstream because now you'd create a case where their cells are bathed in a hypotonic solution, just pure water, and you'd kill them. They'd all burst. You have to rehydrate someone with saline, which is an isotonic solution of salt and a little bit of sugar and water. Um, okay, plant cells, on the other hand, like to be immersed in hypotonic solutions. Um, it creates, they like this state called turgid. And now a structural difference between plant and animal cells is that um, animal cells have only a cell membrane, 
Well, plant cells have a cell membrane um, surrounded by a cell wall. So they get, uh, when water um, is co constantly pressing to move into a plant cell, um, the cell wall is pressing back and preventing the explosion of this cell. Um, this uh, turgidity um, provides mechanical stiffness to plants. So um, if you ever noticed a plant that is looking a little sad, a little wilted, um, it's because it is either in an isotonic solution or a hypertonic solution. Um, it doesn't have that same... Um, the same turgor pressure providing a good structure, and so it will kind of flop down and, and look a little sad. So you might have noticed this in your house plants. Um, and you can fix this just by watering your plants. Water is going to passively move into those cells, and they're going to perk right back up again. Um, okay, that is it.